we need to be building for the 21st century. And that means, above all, mass transit. We don't have mass transit in Detroit, and we only have mass transit in a couple of cities in the entire country. So we need to develop a mass transit system, which will be a long time in coming. The second thing we need to do is to develop manufacturing to help our non-fossil uh, development. So we need wind power and, wa and water power, and we can produce that very simply by the Great Lakes. It's just a great place to do it. So there's lots of things that we need to do for the 21st century. And uh, they're, what are they doing? They're talking about more trucks and more vans. And even if they're a little more fuel efficient, the fact of the matter is we can't afford to live this way anymore. And we think that auto workers can be in the forefront of retooling the plants. I'm with the Moratorium Now Coalition. When the housing industry uh, went under, uh, it had a tremendous impact on the cities as well as the suburbs. Here in the city of Detroit, we've lost hundreds of millions of dollars in tax revenue uh, due to the foreclosure crisis. That's why we're calling for a moratorium on foreclosures and actually uh, reparations uh, to uh, displaced and victimized homeowners. Many of them are laid off auto workers. Many of them are auto workers who have had their pay cut uh, drastically. And uh, we see it very clearly in our coalition, the impact of mass unemployment, uh, downsizing, uh, pay cuts and benefit cuts have had a devastating impact on the working class in general. Uh, housing is really the only real wealth that working class people possess uh, within uh, U.S. society. So we are here to express our solidarity uh, with the auto workers uh, who have been attacked uh, by management, uh, also uh, by the federal government over the last several years through this so-called bailout process, uh, which in fact has resulted in the layoffs of tens of thousands of auto workers and the reduction of salaries and benefits to these workers. Uh, the establishment of a two-tier wage structure is bad, not only for workers in auto, but for all workers uh, throughout industry in the United States. People can demand that their union do something for them. I am not, I'm outside the plant, so I would never urge anyone to walk out. But in fact, there are small walkouts all over this country to enforce the most fundamental rights of health and safety and, and job load. There are walkouts over health and safety where workers go out and win their demands. There are some where they don't. Sometimes they get fired. I can't urge anybody to strike in this way. But there is a legal strike mechanism as well. The UAW has retained the right to strike over speed up and health and safety and a couple of other items during the term of the contract. Workers can put pressure on the union to file for, uh, they, workers can request strike authorization and have the union give the company strike notice. When Dave Yetta was president of the largest GM local in the country in Flint, where you're from, they actually won some jobs back by doing this. They had to make some maneuvers around language to do it, but in fact they did. So there are things in the shop floor that people can do every day, but we also need a political party that's independent of the Democrats and the Republicans because uh, if you look at the Republicans, no comment necessary. If you look at the Democrats, uh, the the uh, line is that General Motors is just fine, uh, that uh, GM is the model for the relationship between the U.S. government and the company, and we just forget about the fact that we're selling out the next generation, hiring new hires for almost half pay, no pensions, no uh, retiree health care. They won't have what I had and what I'm trying to hold on to, and that I need to unite with those new hires in order to hold on to. Otherwise, we're both going to sink.